brothers and sisters. One Africa. One Africa. One nation. One nation. Today is the second day, and uh, as yesterday, uh, I'm really honored to be here again. And uh, first of all, I would just like to say thank you again to the organizers. Uh, we have our brother Cheno Alphaba, who is the uh, director of the African Socialist International. He has the uh, responsibility to go around Africa, like he's been here, finding out who wants Africa to be united, struggling to get people who want Africa to be one, to be organized so we can put this on the ground. And I think this is a tremendous job. And, uh, you know, and uh, as we know, it's already thinking of going to Zimbabwe. That's where we're going to be in July. But I hope, I hope he will not make that trip alone. He will go to Zimbabwe with some of you here in this room who will join us in this uh, journey to build the African Socialist International. Also want to extend my appreciation to organizers based here, Sister Wangoi, Brother Anwambo, uh, Sister Akima, Brother Charlo, who also been working uh, hard to get this event organized. Uh, another thing I want to say, I want to say thank you to you uh, in this audience, because you witnessed what happened yesterday. We don't know what was the plan, what was in the head of the person uh, who wanted to disrupt the meeting. But we know one thing is it could not disrupt the meeting because of your determination to have the meeting continue. Because you stood firm, you will not allow any disruption. Somebody said the masses are the makers of history, and we believe the security of this meeting of each other is in the hands of the people, is in your hands. That's why I will call on each one of you here today to be as firm, as vigilant as it was yesterday. Because our struggle for the future of our children and children are to be born is at critical period. And we cannot allow one individual or a group of individuals to hijack our agenda and disrupt our events. So I just want to say once again, thank you to all of you for the stand you took yesterday. I am Louise Kinshasa, uh, born in the Congo, as I say, not far from here. Uh, I know, Clayton, we have a lot of good athletes for everyone, the best in the world. So it's a walking distance, I, was, I would say, uh, from here to go to Congo. And uh, I've been forced into exile. Uh, you remember Mobutu? Yeah, a brother of Moi Mobutu. When I say Moi, I mean Arab Moi and Mobutu are the same. So he was, uh, he, he was in power for more than 30 years in power. And uh, he used just to brutalize the people, kill people, shoot the people, arrest young people, go to universities, send soldiers, stuff like that. And uh, in that process, I end up uh, running you know, away from Africa. Uh, so I end up being uh, in, in the UK. But because of the ASI, I'm making my way home. Right you know, so I'm the general secretary. Uh, and uh, I am a part of what we call the uh, African Socialist International Interim Leadership Committee, which is led by the chairman of my list, Stella. And uh, Chino, as the director of the ASI, is part of it. And there uh, are other members are in the United States and in South Africa. I'm thinking of the brother, uh, Sibu Suso, uh, who is not here in South Africa. And uh, this is an ongoing uh, process. And uh, the leadership of the African uh, Revolution has to be united in one organization, one leadership. Uh, today, my presentation uh, is about the uh, class struggle and neocolonialism in Africa. You know, when you speak to any Africans, generally speaking, anywhere, you say, what's up? A lot of times, so, someone will say, it's all right, I'm okay, or I'm struggling. Have you ever said that? Or just struggling, just struggling. 
What does that mean? You're struggling. You're struggling to survive, isn't it? You're trying to get some money, pay your bills, hustling. In real life, in real world, we are trying to reproduce life. That's what life is about, isn't it? The essence of life is to reproduce life. Because if you can't reproduce life, that's it. So we organize in society to reproduce life, to reproduce society. And we know there is a problem. We cannot reproduce ourselves easily as we used to do. Everywhere, reproduction of African people is problematic. You have no food, you spend days and days, you go to work with no breakfast, you go to sleep with mosquitoes in your house waiting for you, you go to work, you work for months, you don't get paid. It's not unusual to see Africans not being paid. When Kabila came to power, Kabila the father, in 1997, the workers were telling him, we will support you, just promise us you will pay us. We don't know when Kabila is going to pay them, but just promise us you will pay us. We support you. I listened to many reports. I think Cherno gave a report where uh, three out of five women will give birth to Sierra Leone have no chance of surviving the birth of their child. I remember no, a long time ago, a birth was a celebration. When a woman comes out of hospital, it was a celebration for the whole neighborhood. But thing now in Sierra Leone, everyone is traumatized. They don't know if the woman will survive. The struggle to survive is problematic for us. Why is it? Why is it so? We said earlier, yesterday, that we're living in a world that is shaped by the aggression of Africa some 500 plus years ago with the aggression of Africa by Europe. Out of that aggression, a new system was born. A new world economy was born. A new society was born. New nations were born. What we refer to today as the, uh, the uh, European bourgeoisie was born in that process. We did not just meet with Europe. When we met with Europe, Europe was a feudal society, which means that Europe was split between the landlords and the, and the serve. That's how Europe was. It was split like that. But in the process of attacking Africa, stealing so much wealth and labor, Europe was transformed. The bourgeoisie was born, was given birth by our labor, by our genocide. As a result of the strength and the wealth accumulated by the bourgeoisie, they challenged the aristocracy in Europe and seized power. The notion of class struggle, as we know it, took significance in Europe during that time. Time of class struggle in Europe. Class struggle between the feudal landlord and the rising bourgeoisie given birth by the aggression of Africa, by the enslavement of African and African people. The bourgeoisie got so much wealth, so much wealth, that he realized that the European landlords or nobility was a break, was a problem, was an obstacle to the rise and development of the bourgeoisie. In other words, the feudal landlords were standing in the way of the development of the European bourgeoisie. Because the European feudal control power, they had control of the European state. And the European bourgeoisie could not seize power without moving, removing, overthrowing the European nobility from power. And this is the significance of the French Revolution. You remember that? And the French Revolution, you had the uh, French bourgeoisie that overthrew uh, the French nobility and seized power. And uh, this gave significance to this notion of class struggle. When the European historians begin to talk about class struggle, one of the classic examples they give to all of us is the French Revolution. But what is important to us is to understand that 
the French Revolution sat on the enslavement of African people. Because as I said, the French bourgeoisie got its wealth and power from the enslavement of African people. So the French Revolution gave power to the French bourgeoisie, but kept